I want to tell you that there were a whole slew of bills that were championed by the state leadership, those in the majority, those in control of the legislature, that for now allow, for example, guns in your churches, guns in church, that allow more guns on campuses, oddly enough, teachers being armed, school marshals being armed, carrying weapons openly instead of concealed, as has been the law up to this point. And I could go on about 10 or other so measures that make it easier for Texans to have access to guns in all types of locations. So I call for our community and others across this state to hold accountable elected officials at all levels, both in the House and the Senate of the state capitol, to do something about this gun violence culture that we have, this, this culture of violence that we have in this country. And also this culture of rising racism and white supremacy. Thank you. Um, I think the Congresswoman and the Senator bring up a lot of very valid points that we need to take into account on this day of mourning um, when our entire community whether it's in Mexico, West Texas, or Southern New Mexico, are now grieving um, for these victims of what is hate and a hate crime. I'm the son of immigrants, the grandson of a Holocaust survivor. I have seen firsthand and heard stories from my grandmother about what the power of hate and racism can bring to a country and to a society. And I learned very clearly the story that never again should we accept intolerance and accept racism and understand that words have an impact in this world. How we speak to each other and how we listen to each other makes an impact. And so there's a lot of reasons with what occurred here yesterday. But one thing we can't forget is that what this is, it's Domestic terrorism fueled by vile, white nationalist, xenophobic discourse. White nationalist terrorism. And I challenge this country and our federal government to approach the scourge of domestic terrorism fueled by white supremacy and white nationalism with the same fervor that they went after Al-Qaeda and they went after ISIS. Charlottesville. Pittsburgh, Charleston, Poway, and now El Paso. It needs to stop. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Sochi Lutora Small. I represent New Mexico's second congressional district. And um, si, somos vecinos. And I want to thank Congresswoman Escobar for her clarity in action amidst the sorrow and heartbreak and anger because we need to act as one community. Uh, Sunland Park, Anthony, Chaparral, and Las Cruces share many things with El Paso. We share family and friends, we share workplaces, we share this sorrow, and we share this call to action. This call to act against domestic terrorism, this call to act against hate wherever it hides, and this call to stand together. Thank you. The president's Twitter account deleted several tweets today that referenced the word invasion in regards to the border. What's your response to that? It's a shocking first step, but a welcome first step. Um, I am hoping that that is an indicator that he recognizes that his words have power. His words have power. And just as I said earlier, there are consequences to those words. You know, when, when um, I mean, the, the, we have long had a battle in this country with racism, all over the globe. We're seeing uh, nationalism and isolationism take root everywhere. And so it is up to leaders to bring people together, to ease people's concerns and to make sure that people understand that they don't have to fear someone 
looks different or is different or speaks a different language or comes from a different place. And when we, when, when there are leaders who dehumanize those who are different, those who look different, speak different, love someone different, when you take the humanity away from someone, it makes evil actions that much easier because you're committing an act against someone you think is not human. And so that is encouraging, and I would ask that he reflect on everything that he has done and said, reflect on the fact that hate crimes have increased significantly over the last two years. I would also call on those who use mental illness as an excuse to please stop, please stop. It further stigmatizes those who truly suffer from mental illness. And the fact of the matter is, people with mental illness are far more likely to be victims of violent crime and not perpetrators of violent crime. It is about time, and I hope that this tragedy is not in vain if we can finally have a reckoning in this country as to what is really going on so that we can look at ourselves in the mirror and face the truth so that we can take the appropriate actions, actions that will save lives. You know, there is always much criticism for people who in a moment of tragedy want to talk about the why and how we solve problems. That absolutely should be a part of the conversation. It is not too soon to have those conversations. It is too late to have those conversations. We don't want any more families planning any more funerals. The House of Representative, Representatives passed two bipartisan common sense gun laws. And they are laying at the doorstep of, of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. I would go back to, to Washington DC tomorrow for an assault weapon ban and for, for more legislation that we need. That assault weapon has no business being in neighborhoods or in communities. That He bought that legally in a state that has some of the weakest gun laws in the country. I would be glad to go back tomorrow. I think the Senate needs to act on what we have provided first. I saw on Twitter that the Senate Majority Leader um, offered his condolences. I appreciate that. We welcome those condolences. We 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 are thankful for them, but it's time for action. Again, it's not too soon, it's too late. Congresswoman, yes. how do you think we can expect to see some of those changes? Really, it's, it's, as I mentioned, in the House of Representatives, we have begun, we have offered up legislation that we have passed on a bipartisan basis, common sense gun safety reform. There were efforts in, the, the, in state government. I would encourage our governor, who flew all the way here yesterday to offer his condolences, to examine what is happening in his state and why. And I am certain that state legislators would gladly come in for a special session in order to address it. Just beyond our call to action for thoughts and prayers, what is our call to action as a minority in this country, as a minority in the state of Texas, and a minority in the Senate? What can we do? Now, I have to be careful. I have the official, uh, the official podium here because, believe me, I, there's, a, there's a lot we can do and that we should do next year in 2020 that starts now. But, you know, I will tell you really fundamentally, fundamentally, we have to treat people with dignity. When immigrants are seen as less than human, when minorities are seen as less than human, then that's what makes violence possible. That's the breeding ground for it. And so it is really the, the, central, the central call to action today is to lead with love. That is the lesson El Paso learned Ago. The lesson that El Paso learned long ago is that we lead with love. In the face of hate, in the face of oppression, in the face of fear and pain, we lead with love. That's what this community knows. That's what would heal this country. Thank you all. We, we have a vigil to get to. Thank you for being here.